there and welcome to the special edition of In The Labs With Me Becky. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to create these three festive slot together assemblies. So we've got a sleigh, we've got a snowman and we've got a Christmas tree. Now the snowman and the Christmas tree are standalone parts but equally we've put in hanging holes so you can use them as hanging decorations as well. In terms of the project, it's very simple. It's just a case of lots of 2D cutouts um, and everything slots together. So let's take a look in the software at how we did this. Okay then, so here we're using VCarve to look at the file. So I actually designed this uh, in VCarve software, drew up all of the vectors using the various drawing tools that we've got here in the software. And these are all the parts that I'm going to use to machine them. So just to simplify this a little bit, let's just kind of zoom in over on this area over here. So we're just looking at these vectors here. So we've got a slot together Christmas tree, we've got a slot together snowman, and we've got a slot together sleigh. So the idea is the Christmas tree will slot in uh, from this pocket here into this pocket here to create a stand up tree. The snowman, we're going to create a pocket here and a pocket here, and then that will enable us to slot the belly into the snowman so that the, stand, the snowman can actually stand up. For both of the snowman and the Christmas tree, we actually have a hole at the top of each one of those in case you want to do it as a hanging decoration rather than a standing decoration. And then we've got all of the components that we need for a sleigh. And so the idea is, is that we're going to have two side pieces for the sleigh. We've got a back piece and that back piece, you can see we've got these tabs on either side. That's going to slot into this portion here and this portion here. We've got the front portion of the sleigh. And so this tab is going to slot into this slot over here. And then this tab here is going to slot into the opposite on the front of the sleigh in the other sleigh part. And then we've got a base, and this is the base here, and that base is going to slot in with these tabs into each of these tabs on the side profile of that sleigh. Now, as this is a slot together project, it's crucial that we alter certain parameters according to the material thickness that we are using. So currently looking at my job space, we're working with 48 by 48 inches uh, and the depth, which is the most important part here, is 0.167 inches. Now I've actually conveniently highlighted all the areas that would need changing according to the material thickness that you are using. So for example, if we take a look, so everything in red is what we need to alter. So for the Christmas tree here, we can see we've got a pocket. We've also got these um, T-bone fillets as well to ensure that our round tool can cut in at the corners of each of those slots so that we can successfully slot the two parts together. So in order to change the width of our slots to match that of our material thickness, all we need to do first is go into the fillet tool. We're just going to defillet our slots like so. We just click on that and you'll see a little cross will appear and that will enable us to defillet that. And then we're able to then select that. And if we look at the bottom here, you can see that that width 0.1670 matches that of my material thickness. And so if we're wanting to change the uh, th material thickness here, you're going to select both of those slots into the set size tool. We use this option here to scale items individually whereby we just alter the width. We use this option here to uncheck link XY so we only want to change the width in this scenario. And then once you've changed the width, ensuring that you're scaling that from the center of the parts, then we can then go on to then put those fillets back in. So into the fillet tool, I'm going to use a T-bone fillet in this case. I'm just going to click that in place. Now your Fillet radius is all dependent on the tool that you're going to use. Now I'm going to cut this out using an eighth inch tool. So I put in a tool radius of a sixteenth of an inch. So you need to alter this value according to the tool that you're using. So let's close out here. 
Okay, so do the same for the snowman slots as well. And then up here, we'll do the same for the slots that we have for the sleigh. So again, just want to defill it those. And then for the horizontal slots, we're going to alter the height. And then for the slots that are positioned vertically, we're going to alter the width of those. We also need to look at altering the tabs on the parts that are actually going to join into the sides of the sleigh. So here again, I've just put this red box here just so you're aware of the area you need to alter in order to actually change the width of those slots. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to change. So let's go and take a look at the toolpaths. So we'll just press F to fit our screen. And then we'll go and use this option here to switch over to the toolpaths tab. So before we go into the toolpaths, what I actually did was I actually took all of these parts like so. And then I did use the nesting tool in order to nest all of the parts required to create all of my different assemblies, in which case I created 36 copies here. Okay, so going over to the toolpaths now. So we're just going to close out that preview there. It was left to open from earlier. So first off, I've got a series of tests. So you'll see at the bottom over here, I've got uh, three, four identical snowmen. Okay, so we've just got the basic cutout and we've got the slots. And when you're working with slots together projects, it's always good to do test cuts to ensure that your parts slot together nicely, that they're held securely, they're not too loose, neither are they too tight. And so to get the correct setting here, it's always good to do test cuts. So here you can see I've got a series of tests. So I'm just going to double click on this option here. So we've got a pocket toolpath here, so pocketing out uh, all the way through our material um, using an eighth inch down cut end mill. Okay, and we're also cutting all the way through the material. Now, the crucial thing here is the allowance. So the allowance is an overcut. So we're overcutting this by negative 0.005. So it's just going to cut actually past the actual vector by that amount. And so if we go ahead and press calculate there, uh, and then if we just go to our 2D preview, we can just take a look. We can see that's how much it's overcutting by. Okay, I also have uh, a duplicate of that. So it's the exact same settings, except where we've got an overcut of negative 0.06. So if we take a look here, you'll see that we go a little bit further there. We've got another one, which is negative 0.007. So again, just cutting that a little bit more. And the reason why I'm cutting this a little bit more every time is because I am going to be painting these. And so I'm going to test this with a primed and coated piece of material to just test the best fit that we've got there and then once I've done that test then I can choose whichever setting worked best and then apply that to all of my slots so it's always good to do test cuts when you are working with slots together assemblies okay so we'll quickly walk through the rest of the toolpaths that we have here so We've got, uh, we also have a profile that's going to cut that out. So that's just a simple profile toolpath that will cut all of those parts out so we can check the fit there. Okay, so moving on, we've then got a toolpath here called Profile Smile. Okay, so here we've got a profile toolpath. We've got a start depth of 0 0.05 and a cut depth of 0 0.05 using a 60 degree V bit. Okay. And for all of these toolpaths, I've actually made use of the automatic vector selector. So it's selecting all of the vectors based on the layers that they are associated with. And so here it's pulling out all of those smiles from this layer here called Snowman Smile. Okay, so we'll close out there. And then if we go ahead and preview that, you'll see all of those smiles. Okay, we'll just tile our windows here. Next, we've got profile buttons. So here we're starting at zero, cutting down 0.05 using that same VBIT tool. And here we're actually going to cut all of the buttons out from the buttons layer. And if we go ahead and preview that one, you'll see what that looks like. So there's all of our buttons. Okay, then we've got a VCarve toolpath, which uh, if you are using Cut2D, you won't be able to have access to this toolpath. However, you could make use of the text and use a VBIT tool using the profile toolpath or you don't even have to 
machine this bit of text if you didn't want to. So here we've got a VCraft toolpath um, and so if we just preview that, so that's just machining that hashtag there. Uh, then we've got a pocket toolpath for the snowman head. So if we just double click on that, so you can see all the vectors it's using there. We're just cutting down a small 0.05 using that uh, eighth inch tool. And if we go ahead and preview that, this is going to create some kind of uh, variation in the heights there. So we've got the snowman's face, we've got the band for the hat as well. Okay, and then we've got the hanging holes. So you'll, as I zoom out, you'll see all of the hanging holes are selected there. So we're just cutting all the way through to create the holes. And then we've got the pocket slots. So for po pocket slots toolpath, you want to make sure that this value is the exact same value as your successful test cut. Okay. So in my case, I'm going to go with 0.005, but that will be become apparent when I come to actually test that. Um, and we're cutting all the way through the material using that eighth inch tool. If we go ahead and preview that, you should see all of those slots in there like so. And then finally, we've got profile cutout. If we double click on that, that's going to machine away at all of the vectors that are currently on the outline cutouts layer. We've got tabs in there to hold that in place, cutting all the way through using that eighth inch tool. And then if we go ahead and close out, and then if we preview that, that's what our part will look like when we come to machine that. Okay, so there's all of our parts. And you can see we've got tabs in there to hold everything in place. If you didn't want tabs, you can just simply remove the tabs using that uncheck option here. Okay, so I think it's about time now that we go over to the labs to take a look at this being machined. Thank you. 
Okay, so I think that's those paints still. We've got another 35 of these to paint, so I think we're gonna have to draft in the help of the rest of the Vectric team. Okay then, so there we have it. So hopefully uh, you've enjoyed seeing this project come together and hopefully it inspires you to share some kindness this Christmas by creating your own festive assembly that you can paint up with little ones ready for Christmas. Oh, exactly, Rebecca. I know this project would keep my kids busy the whole holiday season. Well, sadly for us, this is the last of our series of Christmas projects this year, but we're really excited to say that all of these finished projects that we've made here at Vectric are gonna go on to some nice new homes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you may have noticed that we have more than six uh, toys in this room. Now, traditionally here at Vetric, we all take part in Secret Santa. This year, we've decided to change it up a little bit and we've decided to spread some festive cheer to children that need it most this Christmas. Yeah, so we hope that you take some time to spread a little kindness this Christmas. So from all of us here at Vectric, we hope you have a Merry Christmas and please keep safe. Okay, so I'd say let's take these off to their new home. Sounds good. <laughs>